Hello everybody, welcome to Connections. Hallelujah. It's Wednesday night and we are involved in a series on covenant. Tonight is part number five, so thank you for joining us tonight. Praise God. I really don't want to say too much because I, I, I might give everything away here. So I want us to read uh, the scripture first before I get too much into this. We're going to go to Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2, we'll read verses 4 through 7. Malachi chapter 2, it's that little bitty book in the Old Testament. It's the last book of the Old Testament. For those of you that are learning your Bible, congratulations, that'll be easy to find. This three little chapter is, my, what a, what a power-packed book this is, the book of Malachi. So Malachi chapter 2, verses 4 through 7 Praise the Lord. I believe people are logging on and hungry for the Word of God tonight. We're going to have a good time. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking you tonight to give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Father, open the eyes of our understanding this evening. Help us to see and to know what is the hope of our Lord's calling, what is the riches of the glory of your inheritance that you put in the saints, and Father, show us what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe. Father, show us tonight. I pray that revelation would absolutely flood our heart, that our consciousness would be changed, that our minds would be renewed, that our faith would be made stronger tonight. Father, I thank you for this message. This is not a sermon. This is a message you've given me for the people tonight. And so, Lord, fully releasing faith, fully expecting Revelation, fully expecting grace as we've never known before, fully expecting faith stronger than ever before, and we give you all the glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us, for agreeing with that prayer. Malachi chapter 2, verse number 4 through 7. And he shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Some time ago, actually it was uh, last year in 2019, God began to show me the things I'm going to share with you tonight. I began to study it so far for about the last 15 months or so, I've been thinking about this off and on. And I'm sharing that with you because I want you to know that I'm still young in this. These are things that are new and fresh to me. I haven't fully walked this out yet, so I'm still young at this. But I know that I know that I know that the Lord put it on my heart to minister this message tonight. And I was kind of surprised for a while because I'm so young at this. And yet I know the impression of the Spirit of my heart to minister this subject. And I know that tonight there's going to be answers to questions. I, I sense in my spirit that this message is for just a, 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 maybe a select few or just one or two. I mean, we can all get in on it. But I know that there's somebody watching tonight that God wants to answer somebody's answer, want to answer somebody's questions with this message and so I come knowing this is a message of the Lord it's not a sermon we're not sermonizing I've come to give you a message from the Lord and I believe that it's for everybody and yet I know that the Holy Spirit like a laser beam is going to target people throughout throughout this message tonight and the Lord showed me that this message is going to be a track for some of you to follow where your faith is concerned all right, you've been, you've been praying and seeking, you've had questions in your mind, and God is going to give you a track for your faith to follow. I, that's all I can say because I don't want to mess up anymore. 
All right, but here's what I want to ask you to do tonight. I want you to do me a favor because this passage may be unfamiliar to you. So I'm going to ask you to read it with me again. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace. I, I got to stop. The Lord just arrested me there. Saith the Lord of hosts. What, what does that mean, the Lord of hosts? He is the captain of the host of heaven. This is the angelic army. So I want you to think about that. That my covenant by, might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear with which he feared me, and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. There's that phrase, Lord of hosts, again. Verse 7 is a scripture God gave me decades ago that I was to be at a place where people would seek the law of God from my mouth. I wasn't to be filled with jokes, sports, figures, and Hollywood stars, and, and political stuff, stuff. I was to be the messenger of the Lord of hosts. People were to seek the knowledge of God from my mouth. And so that verse means a lot to me. But as of last year, when God began to show me these things, he's beginning to put it in, in a covenant context for me, and I appreciate that. So here's what I want us to do tonight. I want us to look at what is called the priesthood covenant. All right, give me, give me a moment here. Just say that out loud. The priesthood covenant. God has made a covenant with every person who is in the ministry. Hmm. God has made a specific covenant with every person that's called into the ministry. It is a covenant of life and peace. Now, I'm already going to say something I'm going to say at the end, but I'll say it at the end anyway. To have the call of God on your life, is one of the greatest honors ever. I don't know of any greater honor than to be called by the Lord Jesus into his ministry. I don't care what capacity, if it's what we call the fivefold ministry of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, or if you're called in the ministry of helps, a deacon and elder, if you are sweeping the floor and flushing the toilet, you know God's called you into some kind of capacity in his ministry. I don't know of a greater honor than to be called into the ministry of the Lord Jesus. And God has made a covenant, a very specific covenant, with every person who's called into the ministry. All right, now we have here in Malachi uh, 2 some things that are described concerning Levi. And we're going to look at some of that tonight. So turn with me, please, over to Exodus 19. Exodus 19, and my spirit man's just doing somersaults. Exodus 19. But I'm learning how to be excited and contain myself. <laughs> some, I'm some, I'm learning, because this is so important. We'll, we'll spin like a top when it's over with, all right? Exodus 19, verse 6 and 7. Give you just a moment there. Others are logging on. Hello, welcome, praise the Lord. Glad you're with us tonight. Love Wednesday nights. We just take our time and do whatever the Lord tells us to do and study the scriptures. Exodus chapter 19, verses 6 and 7. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which, which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, this is God telling this to Moses. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Now, verse 6 is the, is the last part of what he's saying, but I, this is where our 
uh, focus is. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. God's desire was that all of Israel would be a nation of priests. Every single one of them would be a priest. They were to be the channels through which God's knowledge and blessings were to be communicated to the world, and in them all nations were to be blessed. That was God's will. Everyone, the whole nation, a kingdom of priests. I'm sensing that somebody, that's a brand new thought for you. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the book of Exodus. Hallelujah. Now, there, we know that there were 12 tribes. One tribe was specially set apart to embody and emphasize the priestly idea. Just as the priesthood of the whole people was part of God's covenant plan with them, so the special calling of Levi, the tribe of Levi, is spoken as God's covenant of life and peace, being with him. Also, it is known as the covenant of everlasting priesthood. So we have two main points here at the beginning I want you to catch. Number one, it was God's will, his heart's desire for the whole nation of Israel to be a kingdom of priests. Okay? That was part of his covenant deal with them. The second was God chose the, tree, the tribe of Levi and gave them a special calling that they would embody, that they would, uh, Lord, give me another word besides embody and emphasize. Uh, they would be a demonstration of the priesthood. The anointing and the priesthood would be theirs to conduct and it was to be a, this is kind of a carnal term, but this might help get across to you what the Lord's saying tonight. They were to be a billboard. They were to be an advertisement, a neon sign of the priesthood. So they were called out for this. It was a covenant of life and peace. It was a covenant of an everlasting priesthood. The priesthood covenant. What is the priesthood covenant? Well, some of it is, is this. The right of free and full access to God. Hmm. My, 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 that'll make you shout, make your hair stand on end. The right of free and full access to God. It was the duty and power of mediating for their fellow man through prayer, intercession, and being God's channel of blessing to others. I mean, those. there's more to it than that. I mean, but that's kind of like the preamble right there. That's powerful stuff. The right and, and, and freedom of full access to God. The duty and the power of mediating for their fellow man and being God's channel of blessing to the world. What an honor, what a privilege to be in this covenant of an eternal priesthood. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, the nation as a whole rejected the idea of all being priests. The nation never entered into this. They pretty much said, well, okay, we know, Lord, that's your will for us, but we're going to let the Levites do it. And so the, the whole nation, I mean, just overall, the whole nation said, no, we're not interested in that part of the covenant. And so they didn't enter in. With that in mind, let's read over the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1. And you, you get to thinking, man, they blew it, didn't they? I mean, the blessings... Of, of a priesthood covenant was available to every single Jewish person, and yet they said, no, thank you. Boy, they missed out, didn't they? But yet it didn't change God's heart. It didn't change his plan for them, just because they didn't enter in. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood 
and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Did you catch that? And hath made us kings and priests unto God. God has never changed his mind. Like the nation of Israel, most in the church reject being called into the ministry. Let the preacher do it. I'm too busy is the mindset of the majority of Christians. Hmm. That's the preacher's job. Get him to go pray. That's his job. Have him go witness. That's his job. That's what we pay him for. He can do my praying. He can do my studying. He can come pray for me when I'm in the hospital. That's what we pay him for. I'm too busy to be in the priesthood. I'm too busy to be in the ministry. The church as a whole have done just like the nation of Israel. They're not interested in this part of the covenant. What we're missing out on is a covenant of life and peace. Hmm. Okay. Give you a moment there to process some of that. I guess man, we should have said it's going to be a little heavy tonight. I don't know, but uh, something for you to think about there. All right, let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. Ooh, just turn right to it, Holy Ghost Bible. Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. Now that is an awesome definition right there of the, of the ministry. We are ordained, we ordained for men in, th in things pertaining to God. I'm not ordained for me, I'm ordained for you. That he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion? Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on, and on them that are out of the way? That's a specific reference to those that are out of the covenant. They're not walking in the way of blood. For that he himself also was compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought... As for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The covenant of Levi's priesthood issued from and culminated in Christ's priesthood. All of the priests in the Old Testament, that office, that ministry was a type and shadow of Jesus. So it came from Jesus, his priesthood, and all of that and all of ministry today culminates back into his high priestly ministry today. Christ's everlasting priesthood issues forth blessings which we are to receive and then dispense to the world. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Do you remember Abraham giving his tithe to Melchizedek? Do you remember what Melchizedek spoke over Abraham? Hmm? Those words that Melchizedek spoke are the same words that Jesus, your high, high priest, speaks over you when you offer up your tithe to him. Blessing dispenses from his priesthood. Well, let's look at that. <laughs> let's go back to Genesis and find out what Melchizedek had to say. Genesis chapter 14, verse number 18. 
Genesis 14, 18. This is Abraham tithing. Watch what happens here. Now, what do we read in Hebrews? Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. What, what did Melchizedek say? Genesis 14, 18. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, <laughs> covenant, and he was the priest of the Most High God, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Jesus confesses that over you when you tithe. Don't tell me tithing is Old Testament and it's been done away. Jesus' priesthood is eternal. He's after the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. <laughs> that was new for some of you. That's exciting. We don't, we're not bucket plunkers. We don't just drop money in the plate. We do what Deuteronomy 26 tells us to do. We take our tithe and we go to Jesus, our great high priest, and we worship him. And we worship him and we bless him for all the good that's been given to us. And as we bless him and worship him, he receives our tithes as our great high priest. And then he pronounces the, these blessings over us. Now, every minister has that priestly duty and responsibility blessing to speak the blessings over God, the blessings of God over the people who tithe and give offerings into his ministry. Hmm, hallelujah. So we see blessings coming from Jesus' high priestly ministry. Now, to the one who accepts the call, the new covenant brings in a special measure to what God has called my covenant of life and peace shall be with him. And it truly indeed becomes the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. For decades I was consumed with the call that God had called me into his ministry. It was a passion, a, a fire shut up in my bones. It was a driving force. The call of God had come to me. And when I found out that those of us that are called into the ministry have a covenant with God of life and peace, and that it's an eternal covenant, it's an eternal priesthood, which I knew that several years ago, God had led me to some scriptures and told me and showed me that throughout eternity I will be ministering the word of God in the mountain in Jerusalem. Now you can <laughs> study that out for yourself, praise the Lord. Let's go back to uh, Exodus 32. Exodus 32. And we'll go to verses 26 through 29. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus chapter 32. Verses 26 through 29. Are you ready? Are you there? I know it takes sometimes a while to get there. Here we go. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp. Give me just a moment here. Okay. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Good question. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Smart choice. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today uh, to the Lord, every man, uh, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Now, we live in the New Covenant. We're not called to take a sword and kill people, all right? <laughs> but what had happened was 
they had made a golden calf. They worshipped it. And so Moses said, those who are on the Lord's side, come here. And so all of the ministers, the tribe of Levi, came to Moses. And he said, all right, now put on your sword and go kill every man. Don't spare anybody that was in the rebellion. Now that's strong stuff. But listen, the condition of this priesthood covenant is their absolute unwavering loyalty, devotion to God, without considering relatives or friends. My, does that not remind us of what Jesus said when he said, come follow me? And they said, well, I've got an ox, I've got a house, I've got a wife. And he's saying, you've got to leave all that behind if you're going to come follow me. Jesus said that there will be times you have to give up your, your houses, your wives, your lands, your brothers, your family, and you've got to come follow me. To enter in into this covenant with the Lord, there are times that we have to forsake and let go of things. Amen. Now, it's rare for God to call you to, to leave your family. All right, I understand that. But the point is that the condition of this priesthood covenant is an absolute devotion to God, that you love him first and foremost. Amen. We're here in Exodus. Let's go over to Numbers 25. Numbers 25. Now somebody out there is thinking, I have known in my heart for a long time that I have a calling on my life. God has a specific role for me to play in these end times. And there's a gnawing on you because there's an emptiness and you don't know what it is. And I'm telling you, the big part of that is that God wants you to know that in that ministry office, call, function, however you want to say it, you have a specific covenant with God. He has coveted with you of life and peace and that it is an eternal priesthood. In Numbers 25, verses 10 through 13, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Now hold on to that word. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. So what had happened was Israel joined to Baal Peor. There was all kinds of sin. And um, Balaam is prophesying, doing stuff he's not supposed to be doing. There is, there's a big mess in the camp. So the breath of God is being poured out. And Phinehas... Uh, the son of Eleazar, so he, he's the grandson of Aaron. He does this thing, and he, he stays and atones for the people, and he stays the wrath of God. Okay? So God says, say to him, I have a covenant of peace with him, and it's forever. To be jealous, and this term jealous, you know, there's a scripture that says, God says, I am a jealous God. That's hard on us because we keep hearing God's a God of love. How does it fit in to be jealous? Because we're told not to be jealous. <laughs> and yet God says, that's his name. I am jealous. I'm a jealous God. How does that work? Most of the time between humans, let's say a husband is jealous of his wife. It's not for her benefit. It's for his benefit. It's selfish. But God is jealous for us. For our benefit. He knows what's going to hurt us. He knows that sin and flesh and living in the world is going to do damage to us. And so he's jealous for our love, our attention, and our affection. It's not that he needs it. It's for our good. All right. To be, to be jealous with God's jealousy is to be jealous for God's honor. To rise up against sin and to be jealous for God's honor 
is the gate into the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. It is the secret of being entrusted by God with the sacred work of teaching his people, burning incense before him, which we do today through our praise, worship, and prayers, and turning many away from iniquity. To be jealous with God's jealousy is to have a total disregard for anything that would try to interfere with God's will. In short, God and his things are the priority. Hmm. I know I just said a lot, and I know you need to process, and I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to us. When we are called by God into his ministry, we are to be jealous with God's jealousy. We're to be more concerned about his fame, his honor, his reputation, not ours. We are to, you know, one of the, one of the responsibilities of the priest and the Levite, and you'll find this a lot in the book of Leviticus, was that they were to teach the people the difference between the clean and the unclean. And that's still our responsibility today, to teach that we're the righteousness of God in Christ. We're new creatures. You know, someone said, well, are, you know, about, I was tempted to go and sin with them, and I told them no. And they said, what, are you better than that? Absolutely. <laughs> All right? We know that we have the life and nature of God in us. That's the clean. Let's stay away from the unclean. Let's sanctify ourselves. Let's consecrate ourselves. And that's part of our role as a priest. That's being jealous for God's honor. He loves us with an everlasting love, and that love is intense. And so we are to teach people in a way that woos their heart and, and uh, motivates them and encourages them to set their affection back on the Lord and not let it be on the things of the world. Hallelujah. Like back then, so today, many who profess that they know God have turned aside to worship the golden calf. That's been a problem. That's been a problem with the nation of Israel. That's the problem with the church today. Is you know God did all these miracles to get them across into the promised land. There's the Red Sea experience, and yet Moses is gone for forty days. So what do they do? They get this great idea. Let's let's build a golden calf and worship it. And when we are waiting on God to do for us what He's promised, we're tempted. To do other things. We're tempted to yield to our flesh. Go back to the world. I'm tired of waiting on God. And God's speaking to some people right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. To worship a golden calf. Rather be a position, a, a title, an amount of money, whatever it is. We're, 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 we're lured to worship a golden calf. But we're God's covenant people. And our attention and our affection should be on God. Because he's delivered us with a great deliverance. Praise God. All right. We need to go back to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Because I'm turning there, I just remembered. Jesus said, zeal for thy house hath consumed me. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. A characteristic of those truly called by God is fire. It is this that the, world's need, that the world needs today. Men and women of God in whom the fire of God burns in them. When the fire of God burns, there is no fear of man. When the fire of God burns, there's no fear of death. When the fire of God burns, there's no fear of being kicked out of my little group, my denomination. When the fire of God burns, men and women can stand, they can speak boldly and act in the power of God on his behalf, right in the midst of his own people who dishonor him, by worshiping someone or something else. A characteristic of call chosen by God is that there's a fire in us. And that fire of God will, will help you to stand, 
through any test, through any storm. You have set your face like flint. You're going to obey God. You're going to fulfill your ministry. There is a fire in you. He makes his ministers a flame of fire. Someone once said years ago, I, I know it was a famous minister, I don't remember now who it was, but they said, uh, get on fire for God and people will come watch you burn. <laughs> and I know Andrew Lomack says that a lot, and that is so true. But there is a fire within us because we love God, we're passionate about Him, we're passionate about the things of God. And in that ministry, in that fire, in that, that calling, God has a covenant of life and peace with us. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're going back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 8 through 11. Hmm. My, my, my. Do we have a track to follow for our faith? I'm telling you what. Deuteronomy 33, verses 8 through 11. And of Levi, now this is the song of Moses, and Moses is singing and declaring things over the different tri over the 12 tribes of Israel before he goes home, before he dies. And it says, And of Levi, he said, Let thy thummim and thy urim be with thy holy one, whom thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah, who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him. Neither did he acknowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children, for they have observed thy word and kept thy covenant. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments, and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee, and whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. Bless, Lord, his substance, and accept the work of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that rise against him, and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. What blessings are available in this covenant of an everlasting priesthood? I, that right there, that passage is worthy of our study and meditation. I don't have time for that tonight. To be a priest, a, a minister of righteousness, is the greatest honor for you, are fighting for the Lord's honor. To be a minister is the greatest honor, for you represent him. And with this is given the covenant of life and peace. Now, I dropped my watch. I don't know, cameraman, what, what time is it right now? All right, thank you. <clears throat> we have a covenant of life and peace. Somebody might be saying, you know, um, this is good, it's new, it's interesting, but, but I, I'm not called. I, I'm not called into the ministry. That doesn't, this doesn't apply to me. Do you remember what Jesus said? He said the, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. He said, pray to the Lord of, to the harvest that he would send labors into his field. He's asking us to pray that he would call people into the ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can pray, God, call me into the ministry. God, send me forth into your harvest field. Lord, I want to be your laborer. You know, I mean, God said to, to Isaiah, he said, Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. And God says, who, who will go for us? He said, Send me, Lord, I'll go. And that's the way it should be with every Christian. Now, now listen. Look at your body for a moment. Do you have any spare parts? Do you have anything that if you think, uh, if, it, if it stops working, it's not a big deal? Every member of your body, every part of your body is important to you. You don't have any spare parts. You need every part there, and you need every part working perfectly as it's supposed to. The Bible tells us that we are the body of Christ, and there is to be no unused members in this body. When Jesus saved you, he's got a call, he's got a plan for your life, <laughs> In fact, I want to prove that to you by Ephesians. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2, if you want to go over there. Ephesians 
Jesus wants every part of his body, every member working. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's got a call for you. You just don't know it yet, all right? Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You do have a call. You do have a purpose. God does have a plan for you. He does have an anointing for your life. <laughs> and when you, when you have the revelation of it and you begin to step into it, I want you to know that this covenant of life and peace is for you. Every benefit of God's life and peace belongs to you. Now, here's one of the benefits. Now, there's many, but I, I've got a little extra time here to, to move into this. <laughs> A covenant of life. The life of God. And we touched on this last week during our healing service. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, 11. God's life is in our spirit because we're born again. The Romans 8, 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Part of our covenant of life is to have so much life in our bodies that we live long, we live strong, and we live free from sickness and disease. Now, now I'm going in a direction. I don't have notes for this. The Spirit of God's leading me. I'm going to ask my cameraman if he could do me a favor. There's a scripture in the Old Testament that's a requirement for priests that they don't have any deformities, that there's not be any uh, dwarf or anything like that. He can look up the word maybe dwarf. He can type that in. And let's look at the requirement of this. You see, as a priest, priests were to be a representative of God, and he required priests to be physically perfect. Uh, no scurvy, no scab, something like that. I, uh, <clears throat> Sister Aline's watching. She might know that verse and send it out to us quickly. But, and I believe it's in, in Leviticus, if I remember right. But there is a, a uh, requirement concerning priests and Levites that they were to be perfect. Now, this is an Old Testament type and shadow. But in this covenant of life, God has made his life available to us to such a degree that when we are in the ministry, we're fulfilling the call of God on our life, we can live free from sickness and disease and from deformity of any kind. Um, 5.13. Leviticus 5.13. That sounds right. Let's, let's see here. Leviticus 5 and 13? Mm, no, no, that's not it. Hallelujah. Trust me for a moment. <laughs> Trust us for a moment. Hallelujah. We're, we're looking for this. <clears throat> this is important. This will build your faith for healing. Principles of priesthood? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, that's all right. We, we can't find it right now. We'll bring it to you at another time. But a covenant of life and peace. So everybody born in the tribe of Levi was supposed to be set apart for the ministry. If somebody was born into the tribe of Levi and they were hunchback, there's another word, hunchback, uh, a dwarf, any type of, uh, in the Bible talks about their stones being crushed, uh, all of that, they were then excluded from the priesthood. Now, why is that? Because when the people looked at the priest, the priests were a representative of God. And so when the people looked at the priest, God wanted the people to see perfection as much and as clear as possible. All right? Well, the same is true with you and I today. Now, 
course, God doesn't require because I mean, you would know I'm, I was born with a birth defect that doesn't that doesn't disqualify me from from the ministry. But God wants to do a work in us that we are a reflection of God, His purity, His completeness, His love, His mercy. In fact, <laughs> you want to know why Moses was not able to enter into the promised land? Everybody goes, well, it's because he struck the rock, right? Okay. The first time God said, strike the rock, he struck the rock, water came out. The second time God says, speak to the rock, he didn't. He hid it a second time. Christ, the rock was a representative of Christ. All right? Jesus was struck once. We don't need to strike him again. Moses didn't enter into the promised land because he misrepresented God. God wanted Moses to strike the rock one time. The next time he wanted Moses to speak to the rock. Doesn't that remind you of Mark eleven twenty four, 24? About speaking and calling those things that be not as though they were. Romans 4, 17. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Jesus said to speak to the mountain to be removed. We are to speak and release the blessings of God. That takes us right back to Malachi takes us right back to Melchizedek speaking the blessing over Abraham when he died. Hallelujah. A covenant of peace. God does not want you and I troubled, agitated in any way. He wants the peace of God on our hearts, on our minds. If anybody should be at rest, anybody should have stability, it should be those of us that are in the ministry. Amen. I, there was a time that... <laughs> I had a deacon meeting, and there was a situation going on, so we had to call an emergency meeting. First thing I said was, now, boys, listen. Nobody's going to panic over this. <laughs> and my deacon said, excuse me, pastor, too late. He said, I'm sitting on it now. <laughs> <clears throat> but those of us that are in leadership, we're not to panic. No matter what happens, we've been given a covenant of life and peace. People are watching our lives, and with this pandemic, all this stuff going on, we are to be at peace. And that is, that's, where's that at? Leviticus 21. Leviticus 21? 18. 18. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Leviticus 21. Now this is a basis for miracles. This is a basis for, for healing and wholeness in our life. Leviticus 21 Verse 16, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations, that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man, or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose, or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed, or broken-handed, or crookback, or a dwarf, or hath a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or hath his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest, shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire, for he hath a blemish, he shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. Jesus fulfilled that for us. When he was at the whipping post, when he went to the cross, Jesus took our, our blemishes. He took our scurvy. He took our broken back. He took our broken hands. He took all of our blemishes upon himself. By his stripes we're healed. And now we are made whole. And we can now enter into the priesthood. No matter what physical limitations we have, we have the, the right to enter into the priesthood into what God, the ministry God's called us to because Jesus took care of it for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is a covenant of life. There is healing in this covenant for us. What is healing? It's a dose of life. Sickness is a dose of death. Healing is a dose of life. We have a covenant of life and peace. We have an eternal priesthood. Hallelujah. So let me stir you up tonight, every one of you that know you have got a call of God on your life, you know God has a plan and purpose for you, I want you to know you have an eternal priesthood, you have a covenant of life and peace, get in it, find out what belongs to you, 
Those of you that don't know what God has called you to do, you have no, no, uh, uh, no idea whatsoever, you don't have a clue, listen to me. God's plan is not hidden from you, it's hidden for you. And if you will seek His face and read the Word of God, He will reveal to you His plan, His purpose for your life, and you can step into this covenant of life and peace. Praise God. God is... He's on the move, man. We, we got it made. We just don't know it yet, but we got it made. Hallelujah. I was studying on covenant today, and God gave me this phrase. When a person knows he has a covenant, he cannot be defeated. <laughs> when a person knows he has a covenant, he cannot be defeated. Do you know that you have a covenant with God? For every one of you out there that's in the ministry and you're getting wearied and tired, do you know that you have a covenant of life and peace? Do you know that what God's called you to do is eternal? Hallelujah. Oh, we're so blessed. Father, I thank you tonight for the word. I thank you for the people and I pray your blessings upon them. I pray tonight that people will not be able to sleep. They'll be tossing and turning because they're excited about what God has for them or they're excited about finding out what God has for them. And I thank you for this covenant of life and peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, we love you. Have an awesome night. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. as we continue looking at God is good. Thank you.